everyone a very warm welcome to our youtube channel savvy forensics so in the previous video we have looked about the hair its biology and how it acts as a source of dna evidence now in this video we'll be talking about the fifth part of sources of biological evidences also the third part of tissue that is bone so let's see what is a bone so bone is a rigid body tissue that makes up our body skeleton it is basically a calcified body tissue which makes our skeletal system why we are studying bone in the forensic context is because there are cases when we find uh, human remains there are many conditions where we can find human remains that begin to decompose shortly after death and the soft tissues may be lost first in this case but the more stable bone tissues may remain so what we can do is we can extract information from the bone as a forensic scientist or as a forensic expert we should have expertise in the taking out information from the available evidences max to max information we should recover from the uh, physical evidences that we recover from the scene of crime so in such a case from the bone tissues we have to take out the information we have to we have to analyze it and we have to take out its details for individualization purposes so identifying human skeletal remains can be applied in a variety of cases what kind of cases are usually we get skeletal remains is the fatality incidents mass fatality incidents air crash or missing persons fires explosions violent crime cases so these are the cases where we can encounter with the skeletal remains as physical evidences so how can we <clears throat> do its examination is the main purpose of forensic science so the branch of forensic science which deals with such examinations or the examination of human skeletal remains for law enforcement agencies to help with the recovery of human remains determine the identity of unidentified human remains interpret trauma and estimate time since death comes under the branch of forensic science which is called forensic anthropology so hope you have understood the introduction now let's move to the biology of bone so an adult human skeleton consists of 206 bones and these bones are of many types so basically our whole skeletal system it is composed of bones it is divided into two types the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeletal system we'll study this in detail when we will be looking at the identification part in the forensic medicine so for the purpose of this video we'll just know their name that there are two types of skeletal system that is the axial and the appendicular so if we take the shaft of a long bone now what is the sh shaft shaft is usually this portion this long portion you can see this is called as shaft of the bone if we take the shaft of the long bone it can be divided into two layers the outer layer is called the cortical layer while the inner layer is the marrow cavity so this is the cortical layer and uh, this is the inner cavity that is the bone marrow cavity or the marrow cavity so the outer cortical layer it is strong and hard and the inner bone marrow cavity it is filled with bone marrow now the portion at each end of a long bone is called epiphysis this portion which is at the end of the long bone it is called epiphysis and it is composed of cancellous or spongy bone which can bear force of compression okay so this is the uh, basic function of the uh, epiphysis it bears compression or it bears the compressive force and uh, basically is responsible for holding the weight of the body okay so these are the parts of a bone through which we can see from outside now talking about the composition of bone what is inside so the bone is divided into two parts the bone matrix and the cellular portion basically the composition of bone it is a, it is divided into two parts the bone matrix and the cellular part so the bone matrix is further of two types inorganic and the organic materials that are filled in the bone matrix inorganic materials includes the calcium and phosphorus as the major component which consists mainly of hydroxyapatite crystals so the inorganic portion consists of hydroxyapatite crystals which are basically of calcium and phosphorus while the organic portion it consists of collagens primarily type 1 collagen oh when these hypo hydroxy when these hydroxyapatite crystals they get deposited on the collagen it becomes a hard layer 
or a hard tissue which is called the bone now the cellular part bone consists of four types of cells the osteogenic cells osteoblast osteocyte and the osteoclast cells talking about the osteogenic cells they are also called osteoprogenitor cells they are usually the precursor of the cells that give rise to specialized cells which are called osteocytes and osteoblasts basically osteogenic cells are the stem cells that gives rise to the other cells of the bone that are the osteocytes and the osteoblast moving on to the osteoblast they are responsible for the synthesis and mineralization of bone basically the calcification of the bone uh, carries out with the cell naming osteoblast osteocyte the osteoblast cells that are embedded in the bone matrix are the osteocyte cells and they are the most abundant cells in the bone this is important they can ask you in the exam that what kind of cells are the most abundant in the bone so the right answer will be the osteocyte so the osteocyte cells are basically the osteoblast cells only but those osteoblast cells which are embedded in the bone matrix they are called the osteocytes and the last is the osteoclast now these cells are giant and they are multinucleated they are responsible for dissolving and recycling the bone matrix now let's understand these cells through this diagram these are the osteogenic cells that are responsible for the development of other types of bone cells basically they are the stem cells second is the osteoblast cells that are responsible for the formation of bone tissue third is the osteocyte those osteoblasts which are embedded in the bone matrix they are the osteocytes and they maintains the bone tissue and the last are the osteoclast their function is resorption and the destruction of bone matrix it is it basically has the function of recycling of the bone matrix so they are very important cells now let's see how bone act as a source of dna so bone as a source of dna evidence now most of the dna in cortical bone is located in the osteocytes why because osteocytes are embedded in the bone matrix so most of the dna will be in the osteocyte portion if we take two cases one is the ideal case and one is the real case talking about the ideal case we get a body get a completely skeletonized body but no decomposition occurs on it if we uh, talk about the ideal case it has been estimated that there are approximately 20000 osteocytes per cubic millimeter of calcified bone matrix so we can say that from a gram of bone we can uh, derive or we can extract a microgram of dna thus compact bone tissue should contain sufficient amounts of nuclear dna but in real cases most of the time what happens is the skeletal fragments that are recovered from the uh, burial sites or the scene of crime they are subjected to decomposition from very uh, they are usually recovered very long time after the crime has been committed or after many years so they are subjected to decomposition now during decomposition process both the nuclear and mitochondrial dna can be degraded so we have to use high yield dna extraction method through which we can extract ample amount of dna and do the profiling so this is very important for the proper uh, grinding and all are very important during the dna extraction procedure so uh, you can see here in the diagram this is a bone fragment and these are the osteocyte cells uh, which contains the nuclear dna so firstly what we do is we digest it through the uh, proteinase enzymes then we extract the dna through these osteocytes the whole procedure of dna isolation from the different types of uh, specimens we'll be studying in the videos when we'll be learning about the dna so please uh, stay tuned and up till then this was all about this video if you have any kind of doubt you can ask in the comment section below further you can also give your feedback and any kind of uh, suggestion you have uh, please do comment below or you can also whatsapp us on this number given below you can join our facebook as well as instagram pages you can also join our telegram channel for regular updates and you can also visit our website savvyforensic.com where you will find where you will find smart learning content for your subject further talking about the next video we'll be looking about the last part of sources of biological evidences that is the teeth we'll be looking at its biology as well as how it it acts as a source of dna so hope you like this video further you can share it with your friends and uh, also you can subscribe to this channel for more quality content and please stay tuned for further videos thank you very much for joining us